بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's uh, lesson which is the unit 3 uh, uh, project but before we do that before we begin our lesson open your workbook page 102 or 102 exercise K read the texts and then answer the questions so we have three texts we'll be reading them and then we'll be answering some questions. So let's listen to them, then we'll be answering the question. Let's listen. Minaret of Jam, Afghanistan. The Minaret of Jam stands in a remote valley, surrounded by barren mountains. It was built in the 12th century and it is the only well-preserved building of the period. It is 65 meters tall and was built with baked bricks. The circular minaret, which rests on an octagonal base, had two wooden balconies and a lantern at the top. The minaret is famous for its intricate decoration of calligraphy etched in stucco and glazed turquoise ceramics. It was nominated Afghanistan's first World Heritage Site in 2002. So this is the uh, first article in Afghanistan talking about the minaret of uh, Jam. The second one in Salwa Palace, KSA. Let's listen to it. Salwa Palace, KSA. Salwa Palace is the largest palace in the historical Latif district of ad -Diriyar. It was the first palace built by Imam Muhammad bin Saud in 1750. His successors later added to the complex, which includes seven main units, a mosque, an audience hall, a treasury, and a well, which cover some 10,000 square meters. Salwa Palace is a unique example of Noji architecture and illustrates the ingenious use of adobe, not only as a material suited for the extreme desert climate, but as a means to create beautiful geometric designs. At Taif was inscribed on the World Heritage List in 2010. It has been restored to a large extent, and it has the potential to become one of the biggest living heritage museums in the world. And the third article here is talking about the well-known, of course, Burj Khalifa in the United Arab Emirates. Let's listen here. Burj Khalifa, UAE. Burj Khalifa in Dubai, at 828 meters, is the tallest building in the world, topping the previous record holder, Taipei 101, by 319 meters. It is also called the needle because of its top section that gets as thin as a needle as it tapers to the top. The building took six years to complete and was officially opened in January 2010. It has 168 floors, which is the highest number in the world, but not all of them are large enough to use as residence or office space. The skyscraper accommodates more than 900 luxury apartments, 49 floors of offices, and a seven-star Armani hotel with 160 rooms. So, now that we have listened to the three articles, let's answer some of these questions. What is uh, the shape of the minaret of Jam? What is the uh, shape of the minaret of Jam? The first one in Afghanistan. What is the shape of the minaret of Jam? So, let's see the correct answer here. The minaret at Jam has a circular minaret which rests on an octagonal base. So, it's a circular minaret, rests on an octagonal base. Number two, what is special about the use of adobe in Salwa Palace? What is special about the use of adobe at Salwa Palace? What was so special uh, about using adobe in Salwa Palace? So, what's so special there? So, let's look at the answer here. The section for visitors outside the family and the section for close family members. So, this is the uh, unique thing about the palace, the section for visitors and also the section for close family members. How tall is Burj Khalifa and why is it called the needle? How tall is Burj Khalifa and why is it called the needle? So, let's see the answer here. Burj Khalifa is 828 meters tall and it is called the needle because its top section gets as thin as a needle and it tapers to the top and it tapers to the top. So this is why it's called the
the, uh, the, the needle. So again, Burj Khalifa is 828 meters tall and is called the needle, the needle, because it, the, its top section gets as thin, because once you get to the top, it gets very thin, looking like a, a needle. Underline words in the text, that means the following. So we'll be reading the text again and look for the text, the, uh, some of the words that means the following. Far away, without any plants, a source of water, clever and original, e, become or make something narrower at uh, one end. F, have enough space for and the question five, which building would you be interested in visiting and why? So we'll be reading the text again and looking for words in the text that has or gives the meaning of these words. Again, far away, without any plants, a source of water, clever and original, become or make something narrower at one end, have enough space for something. So. Let's listen to these articles uh, again. Minaret of Jam, Afghanistan. The Minaret of Jam stands in a remote valley, surrounded by barren mountains. It was built in the 12th century and it is the only well-preserved building of the period. It is 65 meters tall and was built with baked bricks. The circular minaret, which rests on an octagonal base, had two wooden balconies and a lantern at the top. The minaret is famous for its intricate decoration of calligraphy etched in stucco and glazed turquoise ceramics. It was nominated Afghanistan's first World Heritage Site in 2002. Salwa Palace, KSA Salwa Palace is the largest palace in the historical Latif district of ad -Diriyar. It was the first palace built by Imam Muhammad bin Saud in 1750. His successors later added to the complex, which includes seven main units, a mosque, an audience hall, a treasury, and a well, which cover some 10,000 square meters. Salwa Palace is a unique example of Noji architecture and illustrates the ingenious use of adobe, not only as a material suited for the extreme desert climate, but as a means to create beautiful geometric designs. At Taif was inscribed on the World Heritage List in 2010. It has been restored to a large extent, and it has the potential to become one of the biggest living heritage museums in the world. Burj Khalifa, UAE Burj Khalifa in Dubai, at 828 meters, is the tallest building in the world, topping the previous record holder, Taipei 101, by 319 meters. It is also called the needle because of its top section that gets as thin as a needle as it tapers to the top. The building took six years to complete and was officially opened in January 2010. It has 168 floors, which is the highest number in the world, but not all of them are large enough to use as residence or office space. The skyscraper accommodates more than 900 luxury apartments, 49 floors of offices, and a seven-star Armani hotel with 160 rooms. So now that we have listened to all three articles again, let's uh, answer the question, underline words in the text that give the following meaning. So far away, what in the text, especially the first one, has the same meaning as far away? Yes, it's the word remote. So remote means something that is far uh, away and secluded. Uh, B, without any plants, without any plants, so no plants are there without any plants. Yes, it's the word barren, it's the word barren. C, source of water in the Salwa Palace article. There's a word there which we take the water from, source of water. I think now we know the word, it's the word well. Well is the source of water. D, clever and uh, original. Clever and original. Something uh, or someone uh, clever, has a, a clever and original idea, for example. Yes, it's the word ingenious. Ingenious means clever and original. 
E become or make something narrower at one end. This is from the Burj Khalifa article. So a word that means that something uh, is becoming or make something narrower, make it narrower at one end. So what's the term for this definition? Let's see the answer here. To the answer is to taper. F have enough space for also the same article. Yes, to accommodate. To accommodate it means that you have a, a space for uh, something. And question five here: Which building would you be interested in visiting, and why? Which building would you be interested in visiting, and uh, and why? For me, uh, for example, I'd be interested in visiting Burj Khalifa because it's, as it said in the article, is the tallest uh, building in the world. So I would like to get to the top and see, and, and see the view from there because it's, as I said before, the, the tallest building in the, uh, in the world. So exercise L here, page 103, write as many words as you can to describe each part of the uh, building objects. Of course, you can see the picture in your book. If you open your book, page 103, exercise L, you will see the picture. Write as many words as you can to describe each part of the building objects in the picture. Then write sentences to describe the building using at least three adjectives in the correct order. So open your book, page 103, exercise L, and look at the picture and try to list some objects and describing words for these objects, adjectives. So what objects do you see? For example, windows. So object, you can see windows, of course. You can say they are arched, uh, small, square, framed, and narrow. So you can describe them using more than one word. Again, objects, windows, arched, small, square, framed, and narrow. Also, door, or even doors. So from the picture, how can you describe the door? Give adjectives that you, you can use them to describe the door. So let's see what I've written here. For example, heavy, wooden, and ornate. Heavy, wooden, wooden and uh, ornate. And also the columns and the adjectives that I have used. Slim, tall, white, and elegant. The columns, the columns for the building are slim. They're not thick. They're slim, uh, tall, they're very tall, white and elegant, they're beautiful looking. So you can, uh, you can use other objects in the picture, of course, but I chose the windows, door, and the columns. So we'll be writing sentences to describe the building using three adjectives in the correct order. So number one, for example, number one, so let's see here, the palace walls are dotted with small white framed square windows. The palace walls are dotted with small white framed square windows. Uh, square windows number two, an ornate heavy wooden door is placed in the middle of the structure. An ornate heavy wooden door, so I used three adjectives here, is placed in the middle of the structure. Also here, number three, elegant slim white columns hold a series of arches along the facade. Elegant, slim, white columns. Notice the order here, elegant, slim. This is an opinion, elegant, slim. This is a shape, white color. So pay attention to the order of the adjectives. Columns hold a series of arches along the uh, facade. So this is exercise L. Jumping to exercise M for the writing, write about a famous house in your country. Before you write, make notes in the uh, chart. So try to remember in your hometown, maybe a famous house there, maybe your grandfather's, maybe your father's house, and make notes in the uh, chart. For example, 
This chart, I filled it with my own notes. When was it built? I think it's more than 60 years ago, more than 60 years ago. Who lives there? My grandparents. What makes it famous? The whole family celebrates their occasions there, even the Eid. The whole, any, any uh, celebration for the family, any occasion, they, move, they go to my grandfather's house and they celebrate there, even for the uh, Eid. What does it look like on the outside? Big and old. It's a big and old house. What does it look like on the inside? It's wide, it's spacious, and also comfy. Are there any famous rooms? Yeah, of course, the most famous room there is the main hall. So you can fill th this chart using your own, uh, using your own writing, your own uh, words. Try to remember maybe your father's house, maybe your whole family has a house in their in your uh, hometown where they all chipped in to celebrate their occasions and so on. So you have to fill this chart by uh, yourself. So now use your notes to help you write your essay. So once you finish writing of, uh, the, this chart, try to write an essay about what you have uh, written. So this is the project here, the objectives to describe different houses. We'll be seeing different houses. Research, a different research different types of houses in the world, Arab countries, Africa, Europe, China, etc. Find and list their features, then note down their advantages and disadvantages in relation to the country area they are built. Three, make notes in the chart and use them to make a PowerPoint or poster presentation for your class. Uh, for your class. Select and use pictures, invite your classmates to comment and or ask questions after the presentation. So we'll be talking about different types of houses from different parts of the, uh, of the world. As you can see here, this is a, the first picture here. What can you see? Yes, this is a tent, a Bedouin tent. And this one, this house, you can see it in uh, Africa, of course. It's an African hut. And this, these are all if you remember, what do, we, what do we call them? The small houses built, uh, built from ice. That's correct. We call them igloos. So type of home, construction materials, size, shape, methods, uh, ease of instruction. Is it easy? Cost, number of inhabitants, rooms, and so on. So we have three different types of houses. African hut, Bedouin tent, Eskimo igloo. So construction materials, let's begin with the African hut. Mud, wood, and grass. It's not built from uh, bricks, of course, or cement. So as you can see in the picture, it's made from mud, wood, and grass. Uh, size, it's round size, maybe cylinder shape. Uh, ease of instruction, it's easy to build. The cost, of course, it's cheap. It's not expensive because of the materials are you can find in nature. A number of inhabitants, two or maybe three, of course, this is according to the size of the hut itself, but it's usually not more than three or maybe even two rooms. So the whole hut is just one room, actually. So the whole hut is actually one room. And the Bedouin tent, the materials, it's made basically from camel hair, of course, as we all know size and shape it's a rectangular uh, shape or some of them are square shaped but most of them are rectangular uh, shapes uh, ease of instruction of course it's easy to build cost is it cheap or expensive of course we know it's a uh, cheap number of inhabitants according to the size maybe as just as the african hut according to the size of the tent, uh, it can accommodate one, two, three, four, or even a whole family. Rooms, there are no rooms, just as the hut. The whole uh, tent is just one uh, room. Maybe sometimes they put dividers, like uh, curtains or something like that. The Eskimo igloo, the materials, of course, we know it's built from ice. It's shaped like a dome. It's dome-shaped. 
like a half a ball. This is a dome, dome shaped. The ease of instruction. It's hard to build. It's not as easy to build as a Bedouin tent or an African hut. It's also cheap. Uh, the inhabitants, maybe one or two. It doesn't fit a whole family, of course. Rooms, there are no rooms. The whole thing is just one uh, big rooms. Cooking facilities, continuing here. Uh, the African hut, there are no cooking facilities. You cook outside using, of course, uh, wood. Uh, sleeping arrangements, you sleep on straw beds. Uh, heating, use uh, wood fire, of course. Maybe the lighting also, you can use la lanterns. Special features, there, is no, there are no special features actually for the, spe for the African hut. Uh, be the Bedouin tent, the cooking facilities, you cook outside also using the uh, wood. Uh, sleeping arrangements, of course we sleep uh, you sleep on the on the ground on the floor heating you use also wood fire lighting it's the uh, same thing using wood fire or maybe lantern same thing uh, special features you can say it's beautiful looking the eskimo uh, the eskimo igloo cooking facilities the stove the cook, the cook using stove inside of course the igloo sleeping arrangements they sleep on beds heating or cooling of course, there is no cooling there because it's already cold. And for uh, heating, of course, they use uh, blankets, heavy blankets to warm themselves. Uh, lighting, they use lanterns or maybe some of them have elect electricity inside. Uh, special features also, it's beautiful uh, looking. About the advantages or disadvantages of these, of course, you can fill these by yourself. And also all of this chart, you can fill it using your own words giving your own opinion and also you can add a fourth house a fourth accommodation from a different type of a different place of the world and you can fill it by uh, your self and with that we reach the end of this lesson see you next lesson inshallah subhanakallah wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum